A very good morning to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. And as you all know that we are preparing for NTA UGC NET JRF preparation 2023 for this ongoing examinations. With respect to latest analysis cycle, we are taking all the expected questions which have been asked from 13th of June. So today the, question, uh, the topic which we are going to focus is levels of teaching and teacher-centered learning because these topics are very, were very common from 13th June to 16th June. And these topics are from the topic te unit teaching aptitude, which is taken by me, that is Dr. Trupti. A very uh, important thing before we start the session for the day, in case if you are looking for a revision PDF for paper one, yes, Global Online is providing you this revision PDF, which will be consisting of 2000 plus MCQs, updated MCQs, current affairs, short notes, previous year question papers, most repeated questions. These all is available at a cost of rupees 699. On the given WhatsApp number, you can get in touch with us on these WhatsApp number in order to get a copy of your, uh, that is your PDF. At the same time, a very important announcement that we are coming with new batches, which are going to start soon. And these batches are dedicated for December 2023, wherein we will be starting from all the conceptual parts where we'll be talking about revision lectures then we will going with mcqs and no doubt we will be taking analysis of these 2023 paper questions also in order to prepare yourself very well now before we go ahead for today's session let me tell you one thing that in on 17th june paper that is where the paper which was scheduled on 17th june this specific uh, topic, teaching aptitude, was not seen in second shift. So there was no question of teaching aptitude in second shift, whereas in first shift, it was there. So uh, exams, you know, definitely you cannot predict what N NTA UGC net will come up with. But at the same time, you have to be ensured that from your end, you are preparing with all the questions and you are giving your best. You can get in touch with, uh, you can also avail a, uh, the facility for paper one with the help of global online app. You can download this app with the help of Google Play Store. This app, this is the interface of the app which looks like over here. We also have, you know, various courses for paper one. Once you click on paper one, you will be getting various courses wherein we have all the courses listed unit wise, uh, syllabus wise, your question, video lectures, MCQs, all that is available in Hindi as well as in English on the app very systematically. You can get in touch with us in case if you have any concern query for the same so now let's start the session uh, for the day wherein we are going to start with the questions of your uh, teaching aptitude so here comes your first question that is uh, which level of teaching involves the facilitation of learning experiences of individual students or small group so here see the we as i said i have taken two topics okay now these two topics are based on you know based on all the numbers uh, which is basically talking about what it is talking about we uh, the same thing uh, which is to basically talking about your teaching aptitude uh, topic so let's see what exactly the answer will be <clears throat> i'm just giving the time so that everyone can come up with the answer uh very well so we have the options as micro teaching macro teaching meso teaching okay as well as mega teaching okay so let's see what exactly these options are and how will you come to this uh, options or, you know, what exactly will be the closer option for the given uh, concept? So let's see one by one. So, uh, okay. So which I'll just go through the question and I'll explain you some part of, you know, the topics also very well so that it will be easier for you to remember. So we are talking about which level of teaching involves the facilitation of learning experience for individual students or small groups. So it is emphasizing on what? It is emphasizing on small groups. Okay. It is emphasizing on individual students. So whether it is micro, whether it is macro, whether it is meso or whether it is mega. So when we talk about uh, teaching experiences for small groups or individual students, it is basically called as micro teaching. So micro teaching is supporting the individuals to develop the learning expertise 
to ensure that you know uh, there are effective ways through which learning can be experienced so this is talking about what this is talking about your micro teaching for example supporting the development uh, of assessment practices and curriculum design so that can come and this is all done from what this is all done from the professionals so this can come as what one of the example of micro teaching now macro teaching you know which is done at a very long scale or which is done at a very big scale so that indicates what it indicates your macro teaching now the topic new topic is here which is listed as meso teaching so let's understand what is this meso teaching it works in for the improvement of institutional system i mean to say that this meso teaching takes into consideration to improve not only the individual but at also at the same time it's taken into consideration the improvement of the system the improvement of the uh, procedure the rules as well as you know determining or providing the guidance so meso teaching is basically focusing for that is it clear but here the question was not about meso or macro it was about individual students and small groups so it indicates what it indicates your ma ma micro teaching so let's go to question number two now okay so yes question number two says that which level of teaching focuses on the design and implementation of curriculum at a system wide or institutional level so here you they are talking about what okay let's see the question very well they are talking about let's yes let they are what they are talking about they are talking about the level of teaching which focuses on the design and implementation of curriculum at a system wide or institutional level okay at a wider system or a institutional level so the, is it instructional teaching is it systematic teaching is it administrative teaching or it is pedagogical so here they are asking us the focus is on the implementation of curriculum at institutional or a system wide level so yes when we talk about implementation of the system okay with the institutional level that is called as what it is called as your systematic it is basically known as what it is basically known as your systematic teaching or it is known as or called as your level of teaching will be systematic teaching okay now coming to question number 3 everyone so question number 3 is basically at which level of teaching do teachers typically engage in instructional planning assessment and classroom management so here they are asking us that at which level of teaching do teachers engage in instructional planning at the same time assessment also and at the same time meso uh, sorry at the same time it is talking about what it is talking about classroom management also so what does it indicates the level of teaching the teachers typically engage in instructional planning assessment and classroom management so whether it is macro whether it is micro whether it is meso or whether it is mega so when we are talking about instructional planning including your assessment including your classroom management so it indicates what it indicates your meso teaching it 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 takes into consideration what meso teaching it takes into consideration your meso teaching which is not only talking about engaging the instructional planning the assessment the classroom management okay now let's come to question number 4 so question number 4 is basically about which level of teaching involves the dissemination of knowledge skills to a larger audience often through lectures or online courses now see here they have very specifically given that the level of teaching involves the dissemination of knowledge and skills to the larger audiences often through lectures or online courses so it is taken into consideration what it is taking into consideration the uh, knowledge which is disseminated which is passed on uh, with the skills okay but to a larger audience so when we are talking about larger audience but here they have given lectures also as well as online courses also so whether it is micro macro micro meso or meso or mega so as i said see it is talking about larger audience not only if audiences but online teaching so in such case it includes what it includes your mega teaching it is nothing but it is called as mega teaching meso if i still if you want an example of meso see right now we did a question on meso but still one example of meso also i'll give you meso includes you know support 
access and participation planning priorities to uh, you know priorities with reference to develop of new policies or process so obviously these all is taken into consideration and we had a question number 3 based on that topic itself we just saw in the question number 3 which is talking about the planning assessment and management okay now let's come to question number 5 so question number 5 is about which level of teaching is concerned with development of educational policy sorry framework at national or international level so we are talking about the level of teaching which is concerned with development of educational policies and framework at national or international level so whether it is macro whether it is micro whether it is meso or whether it is mega teaching so we are talking about the level of teaching which is concerned with development of educational policies framework okay at national uh, or international level so from the given options which gets into consideration with national or international level that is concerned with development of educational policies so whether it is macro micro meso or mega so it is national and international level no that time we consider basically development of education policies or framework of you know policies gets into consideration with the help of macro teaching it takes into consideration macro teaching okay now now let's come to question number 6 so let's see what is question number 6 about so yes in question number 6 what we have is which level of teaching focuses on mentorship and guidance of new teachers entering the profession see the question is completely different it is asking about the mentorship and guidance of new teachers who are entering into this profession so whether it is taken care at micro whether it is taken care at macro whether it is taking care at meso or whether it is taking care at mega so the level of teaching which focuses on the mentorship and guidance of new teachers entering the profession so whether which level it is indicated so yes it is indicated at what it is indicated at meso teaching okay at meso the teachers mentorship you know it is focusing on the mentorship and guidance of new teachers who are entering to this profession okay now coming to question number 7 question number 7 is about read the question very carefully okay so and understand the keywords and then come to the answer at which level of teaching so they are asking us which level of teaching are teachers responsible for designing and implementing instruction strategies with a specific subject area or a grade level now see what is the catchy word over here at which level of teaching are teachers responsible for designing and implementing instructional strategies it is talking about what it is talking about strategies we did just now at instructional strategies so whether it is macro whether it is micro whether it is meso or whether it is mega teaching so when we talk about the instructions which are you know uh, uh, designing and implementing instructions which is reference to what which is reference to meso teaching it is basically called as what it is basically known as meso teaching okay yes now let's come to question number 8 question number 8 is about which level of teaching involves the integration of technology into teaching and learning process so here we are asking about which level of teaching involves the integration of technology technology which in, integration of the technology into the teaching and learning experience whether it is techno teaching whether it is micro meso or mega so here it is asking about integration of technology in teaching so which is considered in what it is considered at meso level so where we integrate not only technology but also teaching and it is considered at what it is considered as basically at level that is meso teaching okay now coming to the next question that is question number 10 now question sorry question number 9 uh, so question number 9 is again on the same topic which level of teaching focuses on analysis and improvement of teaching practices which is based on research and evidence so here they are asking about what they are asking about the analysis an improvement of teaching practices based on research and evidence that is reflective micro meso or mega so here we are we are talking about what the level of teaching which focuses on analysis 
and improvement of teaching practices, which is based on research and evidence. So when we talk about research and evidence, yes, it is nothing but it is called as what? It is known as your reflective, sorry. It is known as your reflective level of teaching or it is called as what? It is known as reflective where you enhance, where you emphasize your critical thinking, learning, all this gets into consideration. Okay, now coming next is your question number 10. So question number 10 is, at which level of teaching are teachers primarily responsible for overall management and leadership of a school or educational institution? So we are talking about what, which level of teaching are teachers primarily responsible for overall management and leadership of school or educational institutions? So whether it is macro, whether it is micro, whether it is meso or mega. Please read. It is talking about what? It is talking about responsible for overall management and leadership of a school or an institution. So obviously this happens only and only at what? It will be at mega teaching. It is basically indicating at what? It is indicating at mega level. That is mega teaching. Okay. Now, next 10 questions are based on teacher learn, teacher centered learning. So now the first 10 questions were basically for the reference with your... <clears throat> levels of teaching now the next uh, 10 questions is basically teacher centered so let's see how many of you are able to cope up with the how many of you are able to cope up with the questions accordingly teacher centered learning is often associated with which educational approach so we are talking about what we are talking about an educational approach uh, which is oftenly associated with educational, sorry, it is associated with what educational approach. So whether it is constructivism, whether it is behaviorism, whether it is humanism or whether it is connective, uh, connectivism. So which of them, okay, is basically talking about what it is talking about associated with educational. See, teacher center learning is associated with approach of education. So, obviously, when we take into consideration the educational approach, it is basically behaviorism where it is associated with. Okay. Now, coming to question number 12. In uh, Now, question number 12 is about in a teacher-centered learning, the primary role of teacher is to what? Okay. When we are talking about teacher-centered learning, the primary role of a teacher is to facilitate the group discussion. Is it to provide guidance and support? Is it to create a student-centered uh, environment? Is it to deliver lectures and disseminate knowledge? So which of them is considered, okay, with respect to what the primary role of teacher? What from the given options? So yes, facilitated group discussion. So only discussion or only guidance or only uh, providing student-centered environment? No. So definitely the teacher role is, you know, the primary role of a teacher is basically to deliver the knowledge, to deliver the lectures and disseminate the knowledge. So it is talking about what? Delivering the lectures and disseminating the knowledge. Yes, very clear everyone. Okay, now let's see question number 13. So question number 13 is basically which a instructional method is commonly used in teacher-centered learning. Which instructional? They are asking about instructional. Uh, sorry, they are asking about what? They are asking about which instructional method is commonly used in teacher-centered learning. So whether it is uh, problem-based learning, whether it is inquiry-based learning, or whether it is direct instruction, or whether it is collaborative learning. So see, they are asking about what? The one which is commonly used in teacher-centered learning. So yes, when we talk about teacher-centered learning, it is something in the form of what direct instructions which are given in the, which is given by the teachers. Okay. Now, yes. Next is your teacher-centered learning is criticized for what? Yes, it also has a criticism. So what, <coughs> so basically what it is criticized for? Promoting student engagement and critical thinking, limiting student autonomy and creativity, uh, fostering collaboration and teamwork, encouraging self-directed learning. So when we are talking about teacher-centered learning, 
is criticized for the reason for why it is criticized so basically it is criticized for limiting the students autonomy and creativity why because the dominance on this method is basically with reference to teacher the dominance goes to what the dominance goes to teacher so yes limiting student autonomy and creativity yes now coming to the next question question number 15 which of the following is a characteristics of teacher centered learning so which of the following is a characteristics of teacher centered learning emphasis on student led discussion gen student generated learning goals teacher as a primary source of knowledge student autonomy and choice in learning activities so now here we are talking about which of the following is a characteristics of teacher centered learning so emphasis on student led discussions or student generated learning goals teacher as a primary source of knowledge or student autonomy and choice in learning activities so basically the characteristics of teacher centered learning is with respect to what with respect to teacher as a primary source of knowledge which where teacher is known as what a primary source of knowledge okay coming to question number 16 everyone in teacher centered learning assessment is primarily used for what so when we are talking about teacher centered learning assessment is used to measure the student progress and provide the feedback to promote self reflection and metacognition facilitate peer to peer evaluation and collaboration foster student autonomy and creativity okay so we are talking about teach in in teacher centered learning assessment is basically basically for what see very general question you don't have to you know definitely uh, what is the need for assessment here they are just trying to confuse you with teacher centered learning but whenever we do an assessment what we do in assessment do we measure the student progress and provide feedback do we promote self reflection do we facilitate evaluation or do we foster student autonomy obviously if you look at all the options very carefully we student we measure the progress and provide the feedback So, if you see the option number A stands to be right. Okay. Now, yes, coming to next question, question number 17. So, question number 17, which te teaching strategy is commonly used in teacher-centered learning to deliver content to students? So, when we are talking about teacher, uh, sorry, which are we are talking about a strategy commonly used in teacher-centered learning. So, which is that? Project-based learning, flipped classroom, uh, Socratic questioning or role playing. So, strategy which is commonly used to deliver content to the students. Okay. So, what what this indicates, or it is what uh, what is an indication of this method? So, let's see what exactly this method indicates and what is the right answer for this. Okay. So, when we talk about the given question, it is basically the strategy to deliver the content to the students is basically Socratic questioning. Now, what is this method or what it is called as? So, it is a method that, e, uh, that it's a method of inquiry that seeks to explore the ideas, the explore the concept by asking question. So, here it is, you know, basically to deliver the co content to students. Okay, wherein basically what is the strategy by asking questions. So, Socratic questioning is the way in which you can deliver the content to the students. And it is also basically uh, to clarify, to give the uh, meaning or to make sure that the principles are properly followed. Okay, now let's see question number 18. So, question number 18. Teacher center learning is often associated with a focus on what? So, when we are talking about teacher centered learning, the focus is on individualized instruction and differentiation, active student participation and exploration, constructing knowledge and through the real world experiences or content delivery and information transmission. So, we are talking about what? We are talking about learning is often associated with what? So, learning is often associated with individualized instructions and differentiation, active student participation and exploration. Then we have constructing knowledge through real world experiences or content delivery and information transmission. So, something which is associated with uh, focus on in learning that is respect to what? It is with respect to content delivery and information transmission. That is option number D. Okay. Now. We are talking about question number 19. So, let's see 
in teacher centered learning the teacher's role in classroom management is basically what foster the ownership establish a collaborative environment discipline and order in the classroom or encourage peer to peer teaching and learning so when we are talking about teacher centered learning the role of a teacher in classroom management is basically to ensure that you know there is a discipline and order in the classroom so it indicates what it indicates a discipline and order in the classroom okay now question number 20 teacher center learning is criticized for being what so yes again see there was one more question on criticizing but this question and that question is different uh, that is it is talking about inflexible and rigid in meeting promoting crit critical thinking and problem solving fostering creativity and innovation encouraging student autonomy and self directed learning so here when we talk about teacher centered learning so basically here it is important for what it is and to encourage the student autonomy and self directed learning so yes it is uh, the one of the uh, drawback or criticism of teaching is in teacher centered learning it is encouraging the student autonomy and self directed learning okay yes now this is what we have for the day okay any student who is looking for your paper 2 okay so if you are looking for your paper two notes yes we do have paper two notes for the following subjects you can see the subjects on the screen now these paper two notes consist of what these paper two notes consist of your mcqs and study material which is actually at a fee cost of rupees 1600 but right now we have a 20% off going on so the cost is 1280 you can get in touch with us on the given numbers in order to get a copy for yourself and yes that's all for the day so based on today analysis we will see what questions are expected and those questions will be considered for your next that is tomorrow's lecture okay thank you everyone have a good day